this video is about how you can get acceptable results as quickly as possible in Unreal Engine 5 rendering. Hey guys, welcome back. In this video, we're gonna check out four essential elements to get good results as quickly as possible in rendering and these elements are lighting, effects, cameras, and sequencer. So as you can see, I've grouped every element I have in my scene, like cameras, effects, geometry, and so forth, and it's obvious in the outliner section. So first of all, let's start with the lights that I used in this scene. And the main element to light up this scene is an HDRI map which I've downloaded from a totally free website called Polyheaven. And I recommend you to check out this website because it contains so many HDRI maps with high qualities and they're totally free. But be aware that you must download these maps with HDR format. So let's get back to the Unreal Engine's user interface. So as you can see in the content browser, I've downloaded four HDRI maps from this website. And let's just try them and check out the results. So in this regard, I'm gonna hide the existing HDRI map and let's add another one to the project. As you can see, we have added another HDRI backdrop to the project and it contains its default map. But as you can see, the backdrop needs to move a little bit down in the Z axis so in this regard, I'm going to reduce the height value from the details section. Okay, it looks much better. Now it's time to set the intensity of this backdrop to control the emission of light. Alright, as you saw, adding an HDRI backdrop to the scene isn't very complicated. But the HDRI backdrop that I've chosen for this scene is this one called Skythian Toms. So all you need to do to change the HDRI map is to click and drag it from the content browser to the bitmap in the details section. Alright, it looks much better. So now that we have done that, it's time to introduce the next four rectangular light that I've used in this scene. So as I said, I've used four rectangular light to light up the interior parts of this scene. So the first artificial light that I've used is this one over here. And the reason I put this light here is because I wanted a white light to shine from behind the camera onto the scene. The dimensions of this rectangular light are specified in the details section, but the point to consider is the intensity and the temperature of this light. You probably noticed that this rectangular light shines a cold light on the stage. And the reason is that I set the temperature of this light to 8500. And as you can see, the intensity of this light has set on 0.5. Intensity has set on 1. Okay, now it's time to check out the next rectangular light that I've placed. So as you can see, it is over here and it lights up the furniture that I've placed in this part of the scene. So let's check out the specification of this rectangular light in the details section. The temperature has set on 8000 and the intensity is 0 0.2. And finally, the last rectangular light that I've used in this scene is this one over here. And the reason for placing this light in this part is to help simulating the light that enters the interior space from the window. Alright, now that we have discussed the lightings used in this scene, it is time to talk about the effects. And what I mean by effects is post-process volume. Assigning post-process volume to the scene is almost essential, because you can control so many details of your scene from this actor. For example, here in this case, I'm gonna add a little bit lens flare and bloom to my final shot. 
And finally, I'm gonna set the exposure of the scene manually from post process value. The next step to get a render is to place a camera on the scene. I already have placed two cameras, but in order to better understand the process of camera placement, I will place a new camera in the scene. Now let's change the location of the camera and rotate it to the place that we want to have the render. In order to get a better view, I'm gonna change the viewport from perspective to the scene camera actor number 3. So now that I am in the camera viewport, I can place the camera to get a better view. Now let's change the lens from the details section to get a wide view. In this regard, I'm gonna expand the film back rollout from the details section and then I will choose an APS Canon camera and after that, I'm gonna choose a 30mm camera lens from the lens settings section. Now let's move the camera a little bit to achieve a good perspective and as you can see the rendering frame that we are working on has a wide view and it isn't focused on any object and in order to have a clear depth of view I'm gonna increase the aperture value to 8. Alright now I want to introduce a specific exposure to this camera. In this regard, I'm going to type the exposure word in the details section when the camera is selected and after that just check these two options over here and set the exposure manually. And finally, let's define different values for bloom and lens flare compared to the post process value. And the reason why I am defining different values for this camera compared to post process volume is that I like each camera to have its own space and mood. And it is better that each camera shows us a different scenario of the space and the area. Alright, now that we have done that, let's check the focus and depth of field setting. And in the focus settings section, I'm going to check the draw debug focus plane. And then I'm gonna decrease the focus distance until the focus plane falls on the stairs. Alright, it looks much better now. In my opinion, the image dimensions and aspect ratio can be better than this, so let's work on these two issues a bit to get a better result. So in this regard, I'm going to change the value of sensor width, and I think now it looks much better. And finally, in order to get the output rendering, we need to add a sequencer to the project. And now that we've defined the sequencer to the project, let's add the desired camera to the sequencer that we've created. And it is as simple as I'm doing it. And if you want to learn about the best render and export settings and how to render like real life with movie render queue, make sure you didn't miss the video appeared on the top right of your screen. Alright guys, this is all for this video. Don't forget to subscribe the channel See you in the next videos.